Andy Strickland here on the Big 550 KTRS. Great to be with you, McGraw. How are you? Great. Uh, when is Hockey Sense this week? Uh, Wednesday. Looking forward to that as always. All right, good. So you'll break all this stuff down more Wednesday night. Uh, all right, so I said six. I meant five, and then the Blues got a first-rounder, so he's automatically a St. Louisan, so that's really six. <laughs> that's really six. And then, of course, St. Louis had another kid, first pick in the third round, Joseph Wool, who's a goaltender who, again, grew up playing for the uh, St. Louis AAA Blues, a youth hockey organization here in St. Louis. Uh, and obviously knows all these kids, and he went to Toronto with the first pick in the third round. So, again, six St. Louis kids in the draft. Truly an incredible story. What a uh, accomplishment by these kids. It's unbelievable. Let's get to that in a second. But first, let's talk about uh, it all, all got started, I guess, Friday afternoon when the Blues traded for Brian Elliott or traded away Brian Elliott. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I was told, I mean, listen, now, shortly after the season, McGraw, I mean, Brian Elliott's agent told Doug Armstrong they had a conversation. And this is not the first time they've had this conversation, but... You know, Elliot requested that if they can make a move, uh, he preferred to you know go to, go to another team where he had a chance to truly be the number one goaltender. Um, and so Doug Armstrong obviously, uh, you know, said, "Hey, if I can find something that works for you and also works for the team, then I'll go ahead and make that happen." Early Friday morning uh, is when word broke that Brian Elliott was going to go to Calgary. That was pretty much a done deal. Calgary was also looking at former St. Louis Blue Ben Bishop, who happens to be from St. Louis. Uh, but they got Brian Elliott, and Brian Elliott obviously had a great career here in St. Louis. I mean, really turned his career around. Uh, McGraw, when you think about when he first got here, he had signed a two-way contract. His career was basically looked to be almost over. Uh, what a turnaround now. He leaves as the all-time leader in the history of shutouts for the St. Louis Blues. Wow. Uh, all right, so um, I guess the, um, uh, uh, Jake Allen's uh, less expensive, younger, and they got a second-round draft pick out of the deal. Well, I mean, I don't know. If, I mean, he's certainly less expensive, I guess, for this year, but only by a couple hundred thousand. It was pretty much a wash from that standpoint. And now the Blues and Jake Allen right now are already begun discussions on a contract extension. So I would imagine you hear something on that very, very soon, somewhere in that four to four and a half million dollar range per year, beginning not this year, but the following year, because of course he has one year left on his contract. But there's no doubt by this move, Jake Allen is certainly the number one goaltender, not only for now, but also into the future. What about, I, I thought Shattenkirk was going to be traded any second. Well, if you would have asked me last week, would Kevin Shattenkirk still be a member of the Blues when the team left Buffalo? I would have said probably not. Uh, so I'm a little bit surprised he didn't get moved, but the reality is, the asking price was a little bit high, I think, for some teams, considering that Shattenkirk only has one year left on his contract. So they were, uh, you know, the Blues asking for a first-round pick, and they certainly wanted a, a high-level prospect as well, uh, not to the extent that some of these reports are suggesting. I mean, some of these reports are absolutely humorous that are out there. But also Shattenkirk is looking uh, for some big-time money, and I think that maybe is scaring some teams as well who feel like, you know what, we can probably pull off a trade to get them on our team for this season, but they don't know exactly if they can re-sign them moving forward. And I know Shattenkirk's representatives gave the Blues a list of teams, I think of four teams that you know, they were willing to uh, accept the trade to, you know, or excuse me, you know, uh, you know, re-sign and, and, and you know, agree to an extension with. So he would maybe go somewhere and play next year, but he gave them a list of teams that he would actually sign an extension with. So that made it a little more difficult, I think, for Doug Armstrong. All right. Now, with that being all said, let's talk about this list of, of St. Louisans who have gone in the first round. Is it that good of a junior hockey area, or was this sort of uh, the moon and the stars all lining up? I think it was a combination of the two. I think St. Louis has certainly come along uh, incredibly far, McGraw, when you look at where this uh, market was as a hockey market even 20, 25 years ago, where they really had no chance at all of competing against the traditional hockey markets and tournaments in Canada. You think about Massachusetts and Minnesota and Michigan, I mean, states that really have dominated the hockey world. Um, that's changed dramatically now, and it's going to stay that way moving forward. Now, St. Louis still competes very well, but this was a little bit of the stars and the moon aligned just perfectly. I mean, I'm not so sure we'll ever see this again, where you have five kids from St. Louis going in the first round. I mean, you think about how good St. Louis youth hockey has been for the last several years, McGraw. We've never had a first-round pick ever. I mean, the highest pick to ever go prior to this year was Philip McCray, who went 33rd overall. He had Scott Mayfield, who's in the New York Islanders organization right now, in their system. He went 34th overall. We've never had a first-rounder. And to have five go is so incredible. I can't explain to people how big a deal this is. But obviously you're talking about some bloodlines here, and Keith Kachuk's son, Jeff Brown's son, Logan, who went 11th overall to Ottawa. 
Uh, you know, uh, Luke Cunning, the kid who went 15th overall to Minnesota, one of the hardest working kids I've ever seen. Great family. Uh, his parents, Mark and Sherry, obviously are super excited. But, you know, he's best friends with Matthew Kachuk, basically grew up at the Kachuk household, calls Keith Kachuk his second father. Right. And then Clayton, Clayton Keller, the kid that went seventh overall, this kid has a chance to be a true, legitimate superstar in the National Hockey League. He went seventh overall to Arizona. His best friend was Jeff Brown, or excuse me, Logan Brown, and he grew up playing for Jeff Brown for all those years as well. So I think the combination of getting true professional coaching, uh, you know, McGraw, seeing these kids play, at the age of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up. Uh, these were like little miniature NHL teams even back then, just in terms of how they practiced, how they prepared, how they went about their business. Um, it was really something special when you think about it. But, uh, you know, all these guys, all the Blues alumni, and there's a lot of coaches, by the way, who didn't play for the St. Louis Blues, who really, uh, you know, give a lot of their time and certainly know the game very well as well. All right, I got about a minute left, uh, Andy Strickland. When you get drafted in the first round by a hockey team, then you go to college? Well, some kids do. In the case of a guy like Matthew Kachuk and Logan Brown, uh, you know, if they make the team, then obviously they'll play in the NHL this season. But Logan Brown is almost guaranteed to go back to play with Windsor in the Ontario Hockey League, League and play at least one more year of junior. And we'll see what happens with Matthew Kachuk. I think he probably will go back for another year. Although Calgary is the one team that could potentially slide him right into the NHL roster. So we'll see how that plays out out of training camp. But Joseph Wool's going to Boston College. Luke Cunningham is entering his second year at the University of Wisconsin. And Trent Frederick is entering his first uh, freshman season at the University of Wisconsin. All, right, yeah, what all these kids have a couple more years to go, to be honest with you. Are we calling him Walt, Walt, Walt Jr. or no? You can call him Walt Jr., but he's his own guy. You just call him Matthew. This kid's a special kid. All right. Uh, how's your little tyke, by the way? When's he going to be drafted? Uh, we got about another 18 years to go, so we planted the seed <laughs> for that. All right. I'm trying to get Keith Chuck to come back. You know, he had a reception on Saturday night. It was a lot of fun with his family. I, mean, I said, listen, I'm try- what can I do to get you, come- you know, to come back and coach my kid for the next 15 years? Andy Strickland, ladies and gentlemen, Hockey Sense, Wednesday night. More of this. Andy, thanks for checking in. All right, McGraw. Thanks as always. And-